That's right, we're using new engine blocks that we've designed here in-house with our engineering team and developed at our own foundries that we selected. Once we have a CAD model, we'll validate those designs. We'll have some design reviews with our teams and from there, we do our 3D print. To do a complete inspection of this block is about two to three hours. So if you were to do this with hand tools, it would take days. Yeah, you wouldn't mind if I like borrowed that to see if I could go test some things? <laughs> <laughs> We've moved our way down the line and now we're here at a couple of these machines. Uh, you want to tell us about them and what these do and how many of these machines do you have? Yes, yeah, so these are our cylinder hones. This allows us to hone the cylinder two size before we install the piston and ring. So when they come off the CNC's like we were at earlier, those have a rough bore. Um, we typically allow about five thousandths that we can clean up on the hones. Um, we have four cylinder hones right now that allows us to keep up with the blocks that we run through each day. On average, how long does it take for this machine to hone a block? A small block takes about 25 minutes and a big block is about 35 minutes. So let's move down the line and go check out some of the other cool stuff you guys have. Right. So Bill, tell us a little bit about the machine we're at now. So this is the machine that we use to line hone the main bore of our blocks. This is actually designed and built here in house, repurposed an old lathe. So as you can see, it's running. Uh, it takes about three minutes for it to cycle through a uh, single pass and the block will be completely honed to size. And you guys have even developed something cooler and greater than this. Let's take a walk over there and check that I'd thing out. I'd love to show it to you. Now, Bill, we've moved away from your kind of second generation of line hone machines into the latest and greatest in technology. So tell us a little bit about this and what you guys are developing. Yeah, so the one we saw a minute ago was also designed and built here. This one designed completely from the ground up. It is a little different orientation what you saw over there where it was a horizontal uh, honing operation. This one will actually be vertical. You can see the block positioned in there. It's loaded and unloaded with a robot, so fully automated. The vertical orientation will allow us to be able to change over the hone mandrels. So you'll have multiple loaded in here like a magazine, and if it has a different block, say a small block forward from a small block Chevy, it'll automatically uh, change the mandrel out and keep on going. So. What's it take to do like a traditional line hone versus what this machine does? Yeah, so the first evolution, which is a manual line hone, is about 15 to 20 minutes to do a block. The one we saw a little bit ago, the second version will do it in about three minutes. Or we're expecting this one to do it in about one minute. Now, Bill, we've moved our way down the line to your guys' block washing area. Do you want to touch on this? Yeah, so we manually wash blocks right here. This is really what you see, these two tanks are for doing some of our lower volume blocks or engines that go through the line. We have, again, some of the automation that we've added to the plant. So this is a robotic pressure wash system that allows us to do our blocks quickly and efficiently. So a block on this one takes about six minutes to wash. We're over here, it's almost 20 minutes. Now that we've seen some washed blocks, let's move down a little bit and see the next phase that they hit. All right. Yeah, so this is our cam bearing station. He's going to align all the cam bearings in the journals, and then there's a mandrel that he'll insert that will align all of the bearings, and then he'll press those into place. Uh, allows us to have very straight, true bearings. Uh, and again, maintaining quality as well as efficiency. This will only take him two or three minutes to do, where if you were to do this manually, it might take you 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, it really blows my mind that you guys are installing all the cam bearings at once. Like. I would trade something very interesting for one of these machines at home. <laughs> yeah, and this is another another machine that was designed and built here. A very simple press, but... Uh, so what he's doing there is aligning all the oil galley plugs, correct? Correct. Yeah, he'll get the oil galleys uh, aligned with the holes in the bearing themselves. So now he'll move it over to the next station. We'll install soft plugs, uh, oil galley plugs, and he'll get the block prepar in preparation for uh, installing the camshaft itself. Um, more of a manual process than the bearing install, but we still, he'll, you'll see him load it onto what we call our flipper here. This allows it to get it into position so that he can access the rear of the block and install those plugs easily. So he'll add the sealant for the soft plugs now and he'll install those. A little more manual process than some of the other steps that we have. Uh, one of the things that we have on our project list is to eventually uh, install these plugs with some sort of a, a, a press. So. so he'll clean that up and then uh, once he's done installing the plugs he'll also apply a paint marker uh, to show that the work's been done. That's a good visual indicator uh, further down the line when quality inspections take place. 
I'm gonna install the last of the soft plugs. Uh, this one's a little easier than the hammer. And then he'll drop the block back down and we'll be ready for cam install. Now, what's he doing here? So he's applying the pre-lube. So this is, helps ensure that the engine won't ruin the camshaft when we run it on the dyno for the first time at startup. And pre-lube is important because you don't want to start anything dry. Very important, yep. From there, I'll move on to the paint booth to paint the block and uh, head on to the assembly line. Yeah, well, let's head over to paint and see what it's all about. Very good. We've made our way over to paint and we have Gustavo here and we're gonna watch him and see how his process goes. Yep, so he uses some magnetic masks that are uh, cut to fit the block itself. Uh, again, when we talk about efficiency, it makes his job much easier. So he's gonna put a few plugs in some places that, uh, you know, other than the masks. Yeah, he'll have a couple of spots he wipes down at the end of the process, but otherwise it's, it's gonna be ready to assemble from here. It's a quick dry paint. Um, you know, within a matter of 30 minutes, they'll be able to load it in the assembly line and start uh, installing the crankshaft. At this station, he's going to install the bearings to the block and to the main cap. Uh, he'll pre-lube that and then he will install the crankshaft in there. Yeah, just seeing, you know, he had his rag there, he wiped all the dust, you know, making sure you have good clean parts before you put your bearing in so you're getting a true size. Yeah, and again, again talking about the efficiency and, and trying to make things better for uh, Case and all the other operators. We try to set their stations up so that they have everything they need, uh, whether it be a small block Chevy or maybe he's gonna be building an LS later. He's got everything he needs right here and doesn't have to go searching for it um, and allow him to quickly move the block next to the next station in the line. So one thing I've noticed kind of in this area now is, you know, when he's putting a crank in and he's putting it together that you guys aren't plastic gauging or measuring any of that. And that's because you're doing everything in house, right? So you don't have to worry about that. Right. We, everything's got quality checks and as precise as possible. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, the block's done here. So it allows us to do some of those things without those extra checks. Um, we'll see him run the main cap down with just a, a typical air uh, power tool, uh, but then he will torque it down with one of our DC torque tools. But the screen over here will give him an uh, instant reading of what that torque is, and he'll get a pass-fail uh, for each of those bolts, and he'll know every time that he's got what he had to, to achieve for the torque uh, versus a, a, a manual torque wrench that's got a, a dial that you've got to try to read. and. So again, now that he's got the crank in there, he's got the bolts run down, he's gonna grab one of these DC torque tools here and uh, torque them down, and then they'll set in play. Uh, you can see the two different tools, so different thread sizes require different torques, so those are set for a different bolt. That's my favorite part right there. <laughs> now he's gonna set the end play, and we're ready to move on to timing install. Yeah, so we match our uh, rod and piston sets with our crankshaft. So what he's actually getting ready to do is stage those with the engine as it's going down the line and he's breaking the uh, bolts loose from the cap uh, ahead of the piston assembly which will come in a couple stations later. So this is one of the processes that he does here. Um, because of the, the time allowance in his workstation he can do that extra step even though he's not going to install the, the piston in the engine. So again, what he's doing is really just preparation for the install station a couple steps down. Now, and you'd mentioned earlier that these are all balanced within two grams of each other, and that's something really good to know that you're getting a you're getting a good quality performance product. Like this is this is not your granddaddy's small block Chevy. Now, what's he installing here? So he's installing the oil filter adapter. So this is an adapter that has a bypass built into it. And it's not a thread in style. Uh, this particular block, is that's what that'll use. So it's just held on with two bolts, it's got a, a gasket with it. With that, we, we try to do what's called line balancing. So each station takes roughly six to eight minutes to complete whatever work it is. So breaking the caps takes him three, we need more work for him to do. And maybe the oil filter adapter takes less than a minute, so that the rest of his time will be filled with putting that rear seal housing on. So it allows for those multiple tasks. Yeah, and it was cool. I like that rear seal tool install you have there. And even one of the steps you guys go farther that we're about to hear in a second is you guys kind of air check everything to make sure you have a good seal and it's not going to leak. Yeah, we don't want them to leak. Uh, you know, our last line of defense is our dynos, but we'd like to catch it before that if we can, uh, just because of the effort that goes into building the engine before it gets to the dyno. So he'll actually pressure test that rear seal right here, and he's about to do that now. So with this, he's going to put this this test gauge up here. He's got a readout on this side and it'll give him a pressure reading that he's uh, trying to achieve. As long as he meets that mark, it's good and it can move on to the next station. I 
is going to install the uh, uh, cam plate, then he'll in install the timing set, and then we'll move on to lifters. I like the workstations here, how you have calibrated air tools ready to go to really make it efficient so you're not wearing yourself out all day. Right, so we saw DC torque tools in the last station. Here we're seeing air torque tools that are very similar. While they won't give him a readout, they are repeatable to a, a set torque value and, uh, and achieve what he needs to every time. Yeah, and we saw we threw some marker paint on some stuff to make sure we know bolts are tight and you know, just a quality control. Yeah, we gotta have those visual checks available so that when there's quality inspections further down the line, you can see that the job was done. Should one get missed, quality control will check in with the operator and talk through maybe what happened or didn't happen there. So as you can see, he's installing each of the lifters one by one by hand. Bill, we've made our way over to the piston install area and tell us a little bit about what Jeff's doing here. He's manually installing the pistons, so he's gonna put each one in and then he's gonna locate the rod on the crankshaft itself and he'll connect the uh, rod cap. He's gonna pre-lube the piston ring assembly. So Jeff's very special to us. Jeff's been here for a little over a million and a half piston install. So quite a while, very experienced uh, when we talk about efficiency. He's, he's actually very hard for us to replace. We've tried to actually design machinery that will do what he can do as quickly and we have not been able yet to do it. The man is a machine, he's out here. Just... He, he's a legend, yeah. So he's also got a DC torque tool for torquing the rod caps down. Again, set to uh, the desired torque. Does The tool does the work, not Jeff. So it makes it easier for him to do. I'm sure there was a point in time where he was having to do that with a manual torque wrench. He's checking top dead center. So now he's got the crank turned so that he's got alignment to uh, better access that rod and, and assemble the cap to it. And the process itself is going to take about eight minutes to complete start to finish for him. So he's checking the deck height and piston protrusion for that cylinder. He's done it for each one of them as he's worked through the process. So he has a measurement that he looks for that's part of his work standard. And as long as he achieves that, we know we have good quality and we'll move on to the next station. So we've moved our way over to Tinwares with Tim here, and he's got a kind of cool job here. Tell us a little bit about it, Bill. Yeah, he does have a cool job. He's another one that's been doing this for quite a while, so he's got a lot of experience. So he's installing right now the oil pump, the pickup tube, and the intermediate shaft. After that, he'll install the timing cover and the oil pan. So he's still using the manual torque tool for that oil pump. Um, as you can see, there are some of the DC and air torque tools uh, available for different processes for him. Um, right now he's applying some sealer to the corners of the oil pan. That is something I have never seen before, is a pneumatic caulking gun. Oh, sure. yeah. Well, again, we, we try to make it, uh, you know, it may not be fully automated, but automate whatever we can to make the operator's job easier. And he'll lay down a bit of a adhesive for the paper uh, gasket, align it with the dowels, and then be ready to put the cover on. And we have the timing pointer as well. So, yeah, again, quality is key. We don't want leaks. Um, so we, we go that extra step to apply the three bond um, and ensure that we don't have any leaks. And nice high quality gaskets as well. Yep, yep. So these are gaskets that we source ourselves, uh, made for us. So now here he's putting on the oil pan in the rails? Yep, so he'll have the rails so that we get a, a nice, easy, even clamp on the pan itself. Again, to try to prevent leaks. Well, it looks like Tim here is almost finished up. So let's move on down the line and go see some other stuff. Yeah, so there's a number of things that happen here in preparation for putting the cylinder head on the engine. So we've got a booth behind Bryce where they'll actually prep gaskets. So Bryce is prepping the cylinder head gaskets to ensure that they seal better on our cylinder heads. Tonight, take cylinder head, he'll uh, go through some of the quality work that he needs to do, the paperwork that's required as the engine goes down the line. Um, and then he'll install the cylinder head by hand. Uh, he'll hand tighten some of those bolts um, in preparation for it to go into the robot. And that's important because you don't ever want to put a fastener in dry. Right. We had mentioned that there's a robot that goes ahead and torques these, so he just ran that one bolt down just yep. to make sure the head's on there and doesn't fall off. Right, so it just needs to stay in place. Uh, don't need to have the fasteners engaged. The robot will do all of that for us. So. Now, Bill, we're going to let Bryce finish up what he's doing, and we have one on the robot ready to go and get torqued, so let's go down there and check that out. I'm really excited for you to see it. Let's go. I am excited. 
Well, again, as I mentioned, this is one of my favorite things here. Uh, it really allows us to automate what an operator would normally do. So Joe's loaded an engine here and he's gonna run us through the process. Um, what it will do is torque all of the cylinder head bolts on both banks, so three-step process of torquing, and it allows us to repeat that perfectly every time. So much like the DC torque tools that we saw back at the other stations that are held by hand, this has got a TDC torque tool mounted to the robot, and the robot's been programmed to go to each one of those bolts and torque the spec. So in total from start to finish, it takes just about six minutes for this to complete and get it fully torqued and ready to move out of the station where Joe will uh, spot check a few of the cylinder head bolts with a manual wrench just to ensure the quality and uh, make sure that it's repeatable. Now Bill, what's going on in this area? So here's where we're gonna do our leak test on the cylinder head and block assembly. Uh, just allows us to make sure that we don't have any leaks in the cylinder head gasket, uh, anywhere else that there might be water leaks once the engine's fully assembled. Yeah, the, the leak test itself is pretty much hands-free. Uh, once he gets the cover plates on and the mechanism installed, he can walk away and it does its test while he's doing some of the other stuff. So. Well, let's move on down to valve train and see what those guys are doing. We've moved over to valve train, Bill, and tell us a little bit about what's going on over here. Yeah, so this is where we'll install our push rods or rocker arms and get them tight and ready for adjustment. That's it for this episode. Catch us in the next one to find out more about Blueprint Engines. I'm Justin with Summit Racing. Thanks for watching.